You know, to me, camels are one of the most beautiful things in the world. So I don't understand why anybody would want to harm them. I hear they are killing camels every year in Australia. Thousands of them. The Australian government says they are an environmental problem. But for me, this is not a solution. I am a son of the desert. I have grown up with camels all my life. So I decided to go to Australia to find out more and see if there is a better way of dealing with the camels there instead of just shooting them. My name is Ali Sultan Al Hajri. I come from Qatar, an Arab country in the Gulf. This is where my life began about 50 years ago, in the desert surrounded by camels. My first job as a child was to take care of my uncle's camels, herding them, feeding them. I go with them in the morning. Of course, my breakfast was uh, uh, camel milk and dates. The camel milk is very healthy. It has the best value if you drink it immediately. It's hot. Growing up with these beautiful animals is a full-time job. You don't do anything else. You don't go to school. You don't play video games. You don't go shopping. Camels are your friends, they are your source of food and medicine, and they are your education. They are looking the same to you, but for us, they are totally different from each other. They have different names. This is a, a Naifa. This is a Mangola, beautiful one. Uh, this is Mazuna here. Her mother's name is uh, Rima. This is uh, Sahum here. Some of them is very aggressive. Some of them is very calm. When it comes to beauty, for example, ears is very sharp. That's one of the signs of the beauty. Uh, you see the lips drop down. The more drop down, the more beautiful. And uh, the neck has to be tall. It should be thin. They are, they are really different. Each one has its own character. This is... Dwaynan. It's not too beautiful, but it's not bad, you know? This man is very friendly. Look at his head, bigger than me, okay? So he's very friendly. Usually when I come to him, just we drop his head down. This one here, we bought it uh, four years ago for 250,000 real. And somebody, you know, bargained to buy it for 400, we refuse. By the age of 16, I had become a man who knew his camels by name, face, footsteps, and personality. But I had never had a formal education. To make something of my life, my uncle sent me out of the desert to our big city of Doha. I began my schooling at the age of 20. I went to universities in the United States. Seven years later, I returned to my country as its first certified public accountant, or a CPA. Today, I am a successful businessman and a grandfather. Four generations of my family live together. But my heart is always in the desert with my camels. Uh, somebody uh, was telling me, Ali, you are a CPA, and you're still with the camels and love camels. Yes, I do. My profession as a CPA did not prevent me from being uh, camel owners. 
I cannot stay away from camels, really. In fact, we Arabs cannot stay away from camels, especially those of us who grow up in the Bedouin culture. They have been part of our society for centuries. Camels were mentioned in the Holy Quran before the sky and before the mountain and before the ground, the earth. In the Quran, the scholar said, God, when he mentions something before anything else, it has a significance. Some of us will spend millions of dollars on camels at auction and beauty contest. And I normally don't like it, but many of us take our best animals to the race track. Usually, it's not for the millions in prize money. It's more for the prestige. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ayyuh al-Habl al-Karim. Mushahidina, mutabi'ina al-Kiram. Hayyikum ajmal tahiyya masaiya ma' antilaqat shuotna al-Hadi Ashar. Fi ta'dad ashuot hadha al-masa fi hadhi al-umsiya al-Turathiyya al-Jamila antilaqa salima wa raya'a. In another part of the world, camels are running for their lives. In Australia, they are killing thousands of them every year. It is the largest population of wild camels in the world, more than a million. And the Australian government thinks they are creating too many problems for the farmers. So they have hired people to shoot them. Their bodies are just left in the desert as if they are useless. For me, this is unthinkable. There has got to be a better way. So I have decided to go to Australia to find out. I arrived in Alice Springs, Australia, to meet a man who shares my love of camels. Hadi McHugh has been dealing with camels in Australia for the last 30 years, catching them, farming them, racing them, and even riding them for 3,000 kilometers across the Australian desert. Alice Springs, this is the centre of Australia here. Oh, this is quite a significant part from the early days of the development with the camels and everything that went with it, you know. The camels used to come up from the south and bring all the supplies into this part and it was quite a significant um, part of Australia's history how the camel opened up the country. And I don't think in the early days that Australia would have been opened up that quickly if it wasn't for the camel. Camels were brought to Australia in the 1850s, mainly from India and what is now Pakistan. Hundreds came by ships along with their camel drivers. This is a big country with a tough dry landscape. And back then, there were no roads or railways. Australians needed camels to explore the interior of their country and to carry heavy supplies. Camels were the only animals strong enough for the job. But by the 1920s, there were trucks, trains to do this job. And the South Australian government passed a new law called the Camel Destruction Act. The camels were to be shot dead. 
this was unthinkable for the Indian and the Pakistani camel drivers. Many of them set their camels free in the outback. The wild camels of Australia today are the great, great grandchildren of those animals that help establish Australia. And like their forefathers, they are in danger again. In Australia, the estimates are at the moment there's, there's at least a million camels, possibly up to two million camels, but it just depends on how you believe and what you believe there. The most of them are from Alice Springs are to the west in the big deserts, uh, from where the Northern Territory, South Australia and Western Australia meet. If you drew a circle of a thousand kilometres around that, there may well be a half a million to a million camels just in that one area. It's a, I wouldn't say it's a problem, but the numbers are growing quite dramatically. Big numbers for a country like Australia, yes. Mind you, when saying that, they're spread out over a vast area, and if you put things into proportion, there's 40 million cattle, there's 100 million sheep, there's goodness knows many, how many millions of donkeys and other feral animals, and a million camels, it's not a great deal. Back in 2009, the Australian government put aside about $20 million to kill almost one third of them, 360,000 camels. Private contractors began to shoot them and leave their bodies to rot. It's such an awful waste, such a shame. The answer to it is not to go around in helicopters and shoot the Daleks out of them. The answer, what I believe is the answer, is to develop a commercial industry around the camel, meat, milk, blood science, Absolutely. live export, and all those sorts of things. That's what we need to deal with, you know. It's a great idea. Why waste the camels when you can't use them for milk and meat? But to establish an industry, Australia has a long way to go. I decided to visit a slaughterhouse in Wamboden, about 30 kilometers outside of Alice Springs. I hear that this place has been processing camel meat since 1988. Yet, it's only one of a few slaughterhouses in the country that deals with camels. My name is Lee Tucker. I'm from Alice Springs. I've been a butcher my whole life, and I work at Wamboden Meat Week for the last six years. After you killing them, you slaughter them here? You open them up, bleed them and then you take the head and the neck off. Yep, so basically after this bit, you've opened the whole animal up, so its um, back is to the wall there, and the, this thing here, the hide puller, will pull the skin off for you. At the moment, probably 20 to 10 camels a month might be processing, but capable of doing 50 a day. I was amazed. Here was this huge slaughterhouse capable of processing 50 camels a day, but it was sitting idle and empty. Okay, what's the next step now? So this is where you, you do your final trimming. Oh, just, hold on, I don't understand the, this step. That one, you cut the camel in and, and two pieces, right? Yeah. Two parts. Yeah, no, straight down the middle of it. Yes, okay, and here what you have to do? The final trim, like you go have a look at the body, if there's any little bits of hair or anything, pull your spinal cords out here. That's like the cleanup, right? Yeah, cleanup, yeah, final trimming. Okay, okay. There is so much potential in this place, but for now, it's a wasted opportunity. Where's the bridge? Can you show me the bridge? Just up here. How old are these facilities? How many years? I think 1976 it was built. 1976? Yeah. Is there any plan to expand this facility? Well, if anyone is interested, they're quite willing to have a go. And, like, there is, but basically, we're not doing it, but there is places here to do it, and the camels are here. It can be proven there's money in camel. We've proven it, so it's up to anyone else who wants to try and invest now. This was something for me to think about. Maybe I could talk to my friends back home and see if anybody wanted to invest here. But first, I wanted to see the camels in their natural environment, in the Australian outback. So Paddy took me to Kings Creek, more than 300 kilometers from Alice Springs. A man named Ian Conway runs a cattle station here. 
is against the Australian government's policy of shooting camels. I know a story about the first piano coming into Central Australia on the side of a camel. They even towed a, a wagons and sorts of buildings and that sort of stuff into it. They carried most of the equipment into Central Australia and outback regions to, to develop it. Even though I grew up without a formal education, my uncle taught me hospitality. It is in my blood. Also, I am so far away from home, in another desert across the world. So I created my own small piece of Qatar here at King's Creek, and I invited the owner of this place, Ian, for a taste of my coffee and my hospitality. This is just to show you our, the way of respect you and your culture. Thank you. We decided to share with you some of our culture. Okay. Coffee is ready now. Uh, of course, you are the guest. You can serve the coffee. This is how you serve it, like this. Okay? Be careful, this is a very hot one. You want me to take it? Please. Okay. Sit down here, young fella. Yes. And do your job properly, otherwise... <laughs> you can't serve it standing. You can't stand and serve it. It's, it's up to you, if you want to. Ali's watching you. Relax. Excellent. You're pretty good at that, mate. <laughs> No, it's beautiful. Can I drink this now? Of course. Okay. And of course, you take with your right hand. Yes, of course. Yes. Yes, always with Rodney, the right hand. Rodney, give it Rodney. So tomorrow, what are you going to do? Tomorrow, I'm going to take you from this part of the country, and we're going on to Rodney's country, which is about 20 kilometers away from here. We've got yards set up there, and uh, we'll have a helicopter arriving here in the morning. And the helicopter will be the main mustering thing because he, he's got to search large areas of land. Okay. And, it's, and, and he'll probably search, do a search pattern of about um, 100 square kilometres. So it's okay. a very large area. And from there, he'll pick up camels and bring them into the yards. And when he gets them close to the yards, we'll actually give him a hand. Rodney and myself and Evan and the other boys mm -hmm. will be on motorcycles and four-wheel drives to push them into the yards. When you gather them together, what do you do with them? You release them back again? No, the no. Desert, um, we, we, we sort of breed some of them around the place, but most of them are sold. Oh, and sold? Them, sold, yes. How uh, much are they sold for? Uh, it, it varies from $100 to $1,000, depending on what people want. But we're still looking for the $6 million camel that somebody offered to pay for us if we could get a, a champion racing camel to go back into your country. Six million camels? Yeah, $6 million camel. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. That's that's easy in my country. Yeah. It goes about $20 million. Is that right? One camel, yes. Oh, God. Well, can I sell you one tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> We've been catching camels for about 40 years around here, and, uh, and they've, they've gone all over the world, for uh, exported into back even into Saudi in some instances. But uh, the largest market for me over the years was um, North America. I sent a lot of camels to North America at one stage. And, and alive or? Alive, or? yeah, all live. But now, uh, our, our main business is selling them to abattoirs. And the only abattoir we've got in Australia to slaughter camels at this time is... Abattoir? Yeah, abattoir, uh, a killing works. Oh, slaughterhouse? Yeah. yeah, slaughterhouse, yeah. And th those, that meat is going to Canada. And it's, it's mainly Canada. for the... Yeah, for Muslim nation that lives within mm. Canada. Not all of them, but s specific areas that they meat is sold. But we also uh, have another uh, abattoirs in South Australia, who's, uh, and they slaughter meat to go to the Moroccan army. They have a contract to supply the Moroccan army. I will tell you, I cannot wait to see tomorrow. That's good. The, the Australian camels, really. Yeah, you'll see plenty of them tomorrow. Yeah. Make it more a little bit. Very good copy. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I'll do this with you in your country one day. I hope. Yeah. You should. Hope, you yeah. should visit us. I hope. You have You have an open invitation.
Well, on the end here, we've got this little round hill. Not far from there is a yard. You can't miss it. This is the long wing coming off the like that, and the yards are here. But this is all open country. Oh, this is sort of valley country in here. This is where all the camels are in here. So they're still in the area. But if you can give us a bit of time, because we've got to get down there first. Yeah, right. Get down there to probably half an hour or so to set up. We've got yeah. one gate to set up, so we'll all have to take off at the one time yeah. from here. It'll take us 20 minutes to get down there. It'll only take us 10 minutes to put it in, but you can slow them down anyway. Would the camel recognise the fence? Do, do they run uh, away? They will, but they'll think it's solid. OK. It's only, it's made out of um, hessian. Oh, OK. Yeah, so they'll think it's solid. OK. All right. That's it. As we headed into the desert, my heart was racing. This is a big country, and we were looking for camels over 100 square kilometers. How were we going to find them? I had my doubts, but soon those doubts disappeared. In all my years raising camels, I had never been so full of energy. Camels had never seen human beings before. They were pure wild animals. spent almost eight hours out there. And by the end of the day, we managed to capture about a hundred. They were amazing. They were just like our camels. I'm a son of the Arabian desert. I have grown up with camels my whole life. There are more than a million wild camels in Australia, and the government of Australia wants to kill almost one third of them. They say they are a problem for farmers and the environment. So I have come here to find out if there is a better way of dealing with these camels than the government policy of mass killing. I am in the outback with a team of camel herders. They catch wild camels to sell for meat or breeding. It's tough on both the people and the animals. As we chase the camels into the yard, 
one of them got injured. Ian had to make the hard decision to put it down. The camel is very heavy. And um, I think it might have stumbled a little bit just back there as it was coming in, and enough to sort of bend it. And what happened is it, it dislocated the actual uh, joint on the bottom of the foot. It's too bad. It was too much for me to bear. I could not look. Sometimes you think, am I doing the right thing? But, uh, you know, we, we had to cull that animal and simply because he was injured. But it does upset myself, it upsets all my men. They don't like to see any of the animals hurt or, or injured or, or shot even, like in that respect. You know, uh, um, I had bad feeling when I saw a camel being shot in the head, yeah. which is yeah, I understand uh, that. unthinkable for us, you know. Yeah. And uh, we think uh, the way of killing them and but it should come here. Yep. And this was, will spoil the, the blood instantly and yep. will die immediately. Immediately? Yeah. Yes, it's, it, it's faster than the shot, really. Is that right? It, yeah, yeah, it is, it is, yeah. The only because problem is, with that wild camel, we could not have got anywhere near it. The only thing you could do is shoot it. It upsets me as well. I, I must say, I don't like, I've been dealing with camels for a long time now, and we, we, we try and be as, uh, uh, as humane as possible to get these camels in and out of the yard. You'll be surprised. God mentioned the camels in the Quran mm. before he mentioned the sky yeah. and the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Which which has a special meaning. Yeah. Many even scholars don't know. Yeah. But that's indication of the importance of camels. Yeah. Yeah. They are very smart, very oh, yes. intelligent, very, you know. Well, I, I, I feel that way as well. I mean, I, I I've been dealing with camels for a long time myself, but um, this country of Australia was opened up by camel men and camels. I mean, without the camels in the initial stages... They will not before, be Australian. Yeah, without the motor transport. <laughs> then you have to treat the camel very, in yeah. a good way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I understand even you know, with his explanation, this is the only way, actually. It's better than keeping it, you know, running away with the broken hand. But I still have mixed feelings. I grew up in a tough environment, but seeing that camel getting shot really shook me. However, I was about to see much worse. Paddy McHugh drove me further into the outback to show me the tragedy of the government policy on camels. Where are we going now? Well, I've heard there's been some camel shot just off the side of this road here. So we're just gonna go and see if we can find them. They're somewhere up here, just off the road. Oh gosh, this is one. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hasbi Allah wa na'mil wakil. Hasbi Allah wa na'mil wakil. This is one of many, one of many. Wow. And they're shooting. There's another one, huh? Yeah, there's quite a few all around here. They've run in here and shot several people to look with. And they're shooting thousands of these. Thousands and thousands. And they run in with helicopters and they shoot these out of helicopters and they just let them here and they waste this animal. And these haven't been shot that long ago either. Very bad. This thing has to be stopped. This killing is, is, is not right, is not even moral. This is absolutely unthinkable. 
Why do they want to do this? They think Why? that the camel is doing a lot of damage to the environment, but I don't think they know what they're talking about. I think it's just junk science. You're right. Absolutely, they don't know what they're doing. It is such a waste. Very sad, really very sad they, they could have come up for nothing. You know, even if, and also the, the way you kill an animal. You think when they shoot them, they, uh, they die in a century? No. They will suffer for several hours. They do. Yeah. They really do. The camel, it's a very strong animal, you know, and not anything easy to kill them. Quite often when they shoot them, they, they do more than one shot. It takes two or three shots to kill them. So yeah, and, and, and between each shot, how many, how many minutes? Maybe what? five, ten minutes. You're supposed to shoot ten, and then they come back around with the helicopter, and they've got to put another shot in them. Yeah. So it could be 10, 15 minutes before the second bullet this goes in. This is unmerciful killing, really. Very good. This is absolutely unmerciful killing. Looking at the dead bodies of those beautiful animals broke my heart. I wanted to talk to the people who support the killings. For days, my producer tried to arrange a meeting between me and the head of 91, the company contracted by the government to shoot camels. We even offered to change our travel plans. They refused to meet me. But they sent an email explaining why the government feels the need to kill camels. Feral camels damage desert wetlands and vegetation, pastoral infrastructure, fences and water points, and pose a threat to human safety with their presence on roads, airstrips and in remote communities. There are some parts of Australia that will remain too remote for commercial use to be viable, so there will always be a role for aerial culling to address the concerns of landholders and land management agencies about feral camel impacts. I was frustrated. I really wanted to talk to someone who thinks it's okay to shoot camels and ask them why. I wanted to know what the decision maker were thinking. So I went to see Adam Giles in Alice Springs. He's a member of a state government in the Northern Territory. Yeah. There, there seems to be a roadblock somewhere in someone's thinking within the Australian government about the opportunities uh, that we can um, take up, particularly around creating jobs, mm -hmm. uh, but developing industry. I mean, here in Alice Springs, in the middle of Australia, uh, we have an estimated one million camels roaming around the population that can double in four years' time. Uh, we have infrastructure like road and rail and power, water, um, slaughterhouse, uh, where we can take camels to market mm -hmm. uh, through the slaughterhouse and have an export market. Uh, but the Australian government doesn't seem to uh, want to follow that process. Uh, instead, it's investing $19 million to go and shoot camels from helicopters rather than harvest them. I mean, there are people around the world who would love the opportunity to have a, a, a fantastic source of protein in terms of camel meat, uh, low in cholesterol, uh, that can be supportive uh, and help populations grow. And we all know the world's in shortage of, of food. But why the government, what's prevent the government from implementing what you have just said? I, mean, I haven't been able to get to the bottom of what the roadblock is, but I do know that we have some very uh, powerful and efficient lobby groups in Australia, around beef and around lamb and pork and and seafood, and they do a fantastic job for their industry. Uh, but we've got to be able to negotiate our way through it from a camel perspective uh, to say, you know, sure, we are trying to get within the Australian domestic market, but uh, broadly speaking, we want to go international. And we think that there are gaps in the international market that won't necessarily impinge on the Australian domestic market where we can uh, have uh, a saleable product, uh, we can protect our environment, we can have a greater ecological solution to the Australian landscape uh, while producing jobs for people who live in remote Australia. Why the parliament is listening to the uh, opposition for the industry and not listening to you? I mean, wh why is that? I stand here as a big voice in the middle of Australia, uh, but it's really a small voice in the Australian parliament. Uh, the, the way the Australian political system is made up, it's got bigger voices from Sydney and Melbourne and the big cities, uh, and there's only small voice from, from Central Australia. And even though I've got a big voice, uh, it's very hard to get that voice through, um, through our parliament to um, placate 
and negotiate those lobby groups and get other politicians on side because uh, a lot of those politicians represent um, uh, interests from uh, the bigger cities. Uh, and I'm just a lone voice. I began to realize that uh, this so story was more complicated than I thought. Adam is a reasonable guy, but he's also a small town guy. It's difficult for him to compete with the powerful lobby groups and big city politicians. So I went to the big city of Adelaide to meet one of them, a senator named Sean Edward. He's a senior politician, a man who can influence the government. As a mark of respect, I decided to wear my national dress. What is your position on this issue? Look, uh, I agree that the uh, camel numbers have to uh, be controlled. Uh, certainly, the, uh, the numbers of camel have exploded with perfect conditions here. The, the reason we have to control those numbers is that they're affecting all the natural habitat. My issue is that um, uh, the way we're going about the reduction of numbers is uh, probably in parts in, uh, inhumane and probably not looking at the commercial aspects of, uh, uh, of the evolving uh, worldwide need for, for protein. So I think uh, our country needs to sit uh, down, uh, talk to the people that are conducting uh, the operation of reduction of numbers and uh, start uh, talking to some people, uh, people that require camel meat uh, around the world and start finding a solution which makes better sense uh, no matter which way you look at it. What is your solution for this issue? Well, Ali, the solution is complex, but uh, it's not beyond government to get this right. Uh, there's certainly a lot of uh, commercial interest in camel meat uh, going export from this country. Now, we, we can't continue uh, to get in a helicopter, go out and scare these animals into uh, you know, a gallop and then try and shoot them uh, from 100 feet uh, and think that that's a humane way to deal with these animals. Uh, there is a solution, and it's called uh, capture these animals. You may have to tag them, but doing it the way they're doing it now is not a, any effective way to deal with it. Now, we can't ignore these commercial opportunities, and government can't ignore these commercial opportunities. And what I'm concerned about is, is if you have a commercial motivation, then you will build an industry, and then you'll get efficiencies because industry will always find the most effective uh, way to get a product to market. And in doing so, we'll do, deal with our environmental issues here in this country. We'll do, deal with uh, our employment issues. I understand exactly what we are saying. We just came from Kings Creek and we saw camel being killed and being uh, catched. Uh, is anybody listening to you in the government? Well, the, the minister is starting to listen to me. Um, I know that there's been uh, a, uh, a lot of scrutiny put on the, the, the Ninti One program, which is the program which is uh, uh, designed to deal with this eradication. Um, the, uh, the various departments are now questioning it since I have been uh, uh, championing this cause in the, uh, in the Senate and outside. You know, Sean, camels are very important to us and very close to my heart, really. Uh, what can we do to help you in this issue? Well, it would be terrific if your Emir could ring my Prime Minister and just highlight the fact that uh, we have this cull going on in this country and it's not the highest and best use uh, of uh, camels and which are so highly valued in your culture. So any, anything that uh, you and your country can do uh, with, in the diplomacy channels, whether they be trade or otherwise, uh, would be helpful. So, Actually, uh, it would a, be helpful if somebody there. sit down with me and explain face to face why the government thinks shooting camel is a good idea. But so far, all the politicians I met have been very nice. They have all agreed with me. Back in the outback, I hear there was someone who would talk frankly. Her name is Lindy Safran. She runs the Curtin Springs cattle station, about 400 kilometers from Alice Springs.
when we see camels, we shoot camels. Our philosophy now is that every camel that we see, we put on the ground. We used to be a little bit more flexible, but now the numbers are so great that every time we see a camel, we shoot it. Why do you do that? I mean, do you think there is another way, better way to deal with them? The problem with the camels is that the numbers are getting out of control and they are, they're feral camels. We can't control them. They're doing a lot of damage to the environment and they're doing a lot of damage to our infrastructure. Can you tell me what type of damage they cause? They do a lot of damage to our infrastructure. So they damage a lot of our fences. They damage water points. They eat the trees, they eat the grasses, they compete with the, the cattle for food, and they do a lot of damage to the, the baseline of, of the environment. So uh, the damage they do takes a long time to replace. Is it costly to rebuild the fence again? The fences, the fences for the cattle cost between $1,800 and $2,000 a kilometre. And we lost 140 kilometres of fences in a six week period. So it took us three and a half years to replace those fences um, because we just didn't have that money sitting in the bank to spend. I was confused. Why didn't she see that camels could make money for her? She could catch them and sell them for meat and milk. Why was she wasting this opportunity? The camel is only worth about $200. The quality of the meat in a camel is not as good as in a, in a cow, for example. Uh, and it costs us more than $200 to get them into the yard. So the numbers just don't add up. There's no, it's not economical to be able to, to try and sell them. And we don't have the appropriate infrastructure to be able to do that. So it, it would cost us money. You said this is not possible economically, while your neighbor is doing business with camels. And I believe he's doing fine. Uh, <sighs> The issues are complex and, and, and they're not easy. We don't have the infrastructure to be able to, to muster camels by helicopters. They're using a lot of Aboriginal staff and they're getting funding to pay for the Aboriginal wages. We don't have that. The cost that we get, the price that we get paid for an animal for us is more than what it costs to get the animal in the yard. We talk about camels in, in every day in all of our management plans when we're planning to, to build a fence or to, to do something new, how the camels are going to impact on that is part of every single business decision that we make. We don't actively go out hunting them, but when we see them, we shoot them. <laughs> this is what they can sometimes look like. This is a dead camel, right? Yeah. So, so we cull the camels and we, um, it's not easy to bring them all into a single place where you've killed a few together, you, you lump them up. Um, but our environment is such that you can't move dead camels very far. Even though I am accountant, I still have camels and I raise camels. And uh, this scene, really, I will be honest with you, will break my heart, really. And I... if, you, if you don't want us to shoot the camels, that's fine. Come over here, buy your own million acres, pay your own mortgage, pay your own staff, find your own water, build your own fences. Then you can have as many camels as you want. Until then, you don't have the right to an opinion that we personally have to pay for. So the damage that the camels are doing are coming out of our personal pockets. We're the ones who have to pay for the repairs. We're the ones who face the legal risk of not complying with the law around looking after the country and looking after feral camels. We're the ones who have to pay that money. So if you want to have an opinion, that's fine. But you don't have the right to an opinion that you don't pay for. What needs to happen for you to stop shooting the camel? The numbers need to be reduced. The numbers have to be lower. Numbers. She's now speaking my language. I am an accountant. I understand economics. For Lindy, leaving the camels to do their damage is not an option. Catching them and selling them is not profitable enough for her. Shooting them is the cheapest way. It's not a question of what's right or wrong. It's simple economics. How big is your property? The property is 1,028,960 acres. 
1,600 square mile, 416,000 hectares, or the simplest way to think about it is 100 kilometres long and 40 kilometres wide. Wow, that's big land. We run between four and uh, three and 4,000 head of cattle. 4,000? Yeah. That's a lot. It is a lot. Keeps us out of mischief. Yes, it is. Do you have a, a daughter that I can marry here? here <laughs> no, but we can, we can put you to work mowing lawns. <laughs> I return home with a happy heart, but also a little bit of hope. The killings can stop only if there is a change in thinking. And the camels are seen as a way to make profit rather than as a problem. Here at home, I'm going to start talking to friends and business associates to see who might want to invest in a camel industry in Australia. The desert makes all things simple. Here, owning camels is a blessing. In a different country, in a different desert, some people see them as a curse. But I am optimistic. I am sure. We can find a solution that's good for all. <laughs> 